So I'm the guy for the live demo. Um, uh, I have 30 minutes, a lot of things to show you. Um, so let's get things going. So what is my plan? I will code a proof of concept for you in 15 minutes or let's say 20 minutes. So coming from a business model to, <coughs> to deploying that, showing that live and also having a look into operations and continuous improvement. That is my goal. So let's get things started with the proof of concept. And therefore, I prepared a little scenario. So let's imagine we have got a company, and that company, a company is called, you can't see that. That's good. Or well, not so good. A good start of my presentation. <laughs> Sorry for all of that, but we will improve over time. Um, that is uh, Camundancia. Camundancia is an insurance company, and that is their website. So imagine you being a customer, a private customer, you go on that website and you want to have a car insurance and you can just click here. You can fill in, fill in some data about yourself and the car you want to insure. Then you click that nice little button here and then magic, some magic happens. So the application is hand, handed over to, to Camundancia and hopefully after a few days you get, either get a confirmation or so a policy or you get a nice message with a rejection. And also suppose that until now, this whole process of uh, deciding about that application is done manually. And now, uh, Camundancia, in terms of digital, digital transformation, they want to evaluate Camunda and see how Camunda can help in terms of workflow automation. So automating this process that is there. So um, as Robert mentioned already, the, the starting point is, um, of course, modeling the to be process. And therefore, we have got that component, Kavimo, um, it's a cloud-based cloud cloud platform, so you can sign up for free, or you can just log in. I have already a Heaven account here. I um, only have to enter my password. Here we are. And then you see this nice little welcome screen. The important section is the product section. So basically, for every project, you can create an own, so, so to say, workspace. I already created one. This is the guy here, where you can basically <laughs> store all the, the business process models that belong together in, in one space. And you also can invite team members, teammates, um, that should be part of your project. Uh, Camundancia, for the POC, they already provided some workflow model for me. So they started with Kavimo already, and this, this is what, what we got so far. So this is um, the first iteration of the process in BPMN and in Kavimo. So the application process starts when, when we receive the application, then the business says, yeah, we are evaluating the risk. And based on the risk, uh, we have got two scenarios here. We have got a green scenario. In this case, we just deliver the policy. And we have got a red scenario. In this case, we reject the policy. Uh, that is the first step. And now imagine we are in a, let's say, process workshop. Not everybody sitting in one room, but distributed around the world, for example. And we want to discuss about that process. And this is where Kavimo is for. It's really about collaboration in a team on such kind of a process. So our Superman Nile over there, he um, will now <laughs> um, also add, he also um, inserted or edited, uh, um, um, entered my, my session right now, so he can change the model right now. So, he, so as soon as he changes something on his computer, you can directly see that. And this is the way, one way of collaboration that I mean. So, um, and that's also the way of, of Google Docs. Yeah? So every time things change, you can directly see that. That is one component uh, why Covimo is, is good for collaboration. So I'll drop that, now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there was a conflict. <laughs> then I can show you some other feature. We have got milestones. <laughs> so whenever um, Niall um, scratches things up, <laughs> I have a safe version for that, so I can restore my older version, and I'll start again from, from here. So uh, one other component in Kavimo is um, adding comments. So for example, you could add a comment here saying, um, um, saying, um, are you editing or <laughs> just editing a comment, okay? Or just say, um, edit a comment here, say, um, down here I am, uh, let's, I want you to go here. Let's um, also consider a yellow case. Yeah? Something like that. Just to show you one example that you can add 
uh, commence and also um, um, commence on different levels, on, 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 a, on a process different national level um, as well as on a task level, um, to really get all the requirements together in one diagram. That's the idea. So um, with all that um, being said, and now we have all the requirements here, um, let's just model that yellow case just that you see how easy it is to model um, with BPMN and Kavimo. So you can make just some space here, um, and then you can add that yellow case. So we have a new case here, let's call it yellow. Here we are. And in the yellow case, the business says, then we want to decide manually about the application. And based on that manual application uh, uh, decision, uh, we either go um, in the deliver policy path, so yes, when we ask confirmed, question mark, this is the yes path, and then we go in the no path and we reject the policy if the task worker says no. Just as one example to see, that you can see, it's also easy to, to change the model quite, quite easily with Kavimo. And every time you change things, things are automatically stored um, in the backend of Kavimo, so you don't have to care for that. So now let's imagine that is the to be process for our little POC. What you can do right now is you can share that, of course, in different ways. So you can, for example, create a link, um, copy that, just opening that up in a new tab. Um, and this is an easy way to integrate these kind of um, um, versions and, and process models, for example, in Confluence, in a wiki, in an intranet, in other systems. And the nice thing is you always have the latest version available on your, on your wiki, for example. So that is a nice feature. Um, what I would like to do right now is to export that um, model as a BPMN file. I'm just opening the folder. And now I'm changing roles and tools. So now I'm changing from being a business analyst to being a developer. Yeah? So now the next step is really automating that process. So we do have that process right now in place. And the next step, a step is to add technical information to that, that we're able to automate that. Um, in that context, Kambun Danse gave us some more other uh, artifacts here. So one thing we got was a DMN table. So um, Kambunda model is a local um, client, a modeling client that you can download for all, um, all the different operating systems and it's useful for, for developers and you can model BPMN with that and DMN. And this is how DMN typically looks like. So you have got input criteria and output criteria. In my case, the input is age, car manufacturer and car type and the output is a risk. And each row is basically one rule. So the first row or rule says when you're of age 25 or younger, and if you drive Porsche, and, and if that type uh, Porsche is a 911, then the risk is yes. Whereas when you look in the fifth row, when you drive BMW or Porsche, no matter of what age you are, and no matter of what car type that is, the risk is, is yellow. That's the logic. So I think it's pretty straightforward to understand the concept of, of DMN and also bring rules um, um, from a business side into these kinds of DMN tables. So this is one thing we got. The other thing we got is a little groovy script here. So we have a developer from, from Kamundanza. He told me, yeah, one important thing is really integrating a, a third party system somehow. And he shared that groovy script with me as one example for integrating in that example, a mail server, so a third party system into that um, process. This is what we got, and now let's really start um, with attaching all the technical information here. Therefore, we need that properties panel, and we will start with evaluate risk. So this is, um, in VPMAN, this is nothing else but a rule task. So every time when we uh, are reaching that point, we're calling that uh, a DMN table or another table. Yeah, in, my in my case, it's a table. And the nice thing is I can just specify the implementation of that is DMN. Oh, not expression, it's DMN. And the only thing to link that is you just copy the name of the DMN table and then you paste it here. And then you also have to specify the output of, of that table. So the output is stored in a variable that is called risk level, I'm just copying that. And we add this here as result variable um, and say this is a single entry and then we are done. So this is the thing you have to do to connect the BPMN task, the rule task with the DMN table. 
And the nice thing is when we go one step further into the um, gateway, we can also use that risk uh, variable right now. So we have to configure under which circumstances do we have to follow which path. So green, red, yellow or red. And therefore we can add a so-called expression uh, which basically evaluates that risk level. I already, already prepared that just to make sure that I don't have a typo in there. Um, so we just say if the risk level is equal to green, then we are following the green path, of course. And the rest is pretty straightforward. Um, in the yellow case, we also add the expression here. If um, the risk is yellow, then we're going that path. And same here. If the risk level is red, then we are going that path. This is all we have to do. Then let's just follow the yellow path first, decide about application. Um, I mentioned that already. The business says, so in the green and the red path, we have full automation. So no one, no human is looking anymore on that process, on that application. But in the yellow case, we have, want to have a task worker um, looking um, on that and deciding about that application. And that is a user task. And to do that, that task worker needs some kind of a front end. So he needs a UI where he can see the application and decide about that based on the data. Um, you can um, add forms in different ways in, in um, Kamunda. Um, you can add HTML files. You can create your own UIs. In my case, for prototyping, you can also create these little form fields here. I just create one field that is called approved. As a Boolean, it has a label called approved. And that's all um, I want to do right now. So a little form with just a checkbox approved, yes or no. That's all I need for now. And then we are going back to that, uh, um, onto that gateway again. Again, we have to specify the gateway. So which, on, under which circumstances do we go yes or no? So again, I can use the data of the, that process here. And we got that approved arrival. And I can just ask if that approved arrival is true, then we're going the yes path. And if not, then we're following the no path. We're really uh, uh, nearly done. Last thing to do is um, integrating that Groovy script. So integrating with that third party system. So we are sending out that email. Yeah? Again, that can be done in a real implementation project. You have different options to do that. I think Nile will show you some opportunities about that. So you can implement that as a Java in Java. You can implement that in other languages with an external task worker. In my case, just to make it easy for now, I will have um, a script task saying this is a Groovy script, an external one. And the only thing, not Groovy, but Groovy, that's important. Um, <laughs> and um, we only have to specify where this Groovy script will be found when I deploy the process. That is here. That's all I need to do to connect that Groovy script to that script task. Same here. Script Groovy external resource. And that's all we need to do. OK, now we are done. Every, all the technical information is included in that model. Now let's really run it and see if I have an error in it or not. What I already have here is a running Kamunda instance in, in my background, so a local instance. So um, let's have a look onto that. So the first component I would like to show you is cockpit. Robert mentioned that. So the target group for cockpit is the technical operator. I'll just log in here. This is the enterprise version. In that enterprise version, you see the dashboard here. So that is a completely empty installation. So in the first view, you, as a technical operator, you can immediately see what is going on in your instance. Currently nothing. And this is what I want to change right now. So we've got a nice feature here where you can deploy new process applications. So I just click on deploy. I have to give it a name. And then we only have to specify or select the files that we want to deploy. So in my case, this is my BPMN file, this is my DMN file, and this is my Groovy script. Yeah? Now, fingers crossed, deploy. Oh, looks quite good. So when we're going back to, to the overview, then we see we've got one process definition deployed and one process uh, decision definition. When you go in there, you can also see um, the model that we just modeled. Yeah? Um, so now that model is available in Kamunda and is available for execution. We have a history, history tab here where you can see 
um, instances that already have ran through or run through that, also this is empty. And now let's just start one of, the, of these instances. In a production environment, of course, what you would have to do right now is to connect this little button here with Kamunda, which is pretty straightforward, but too much time for me right now. So what I will write, do right now is I have prepared two REST requests, one for a green scenario and one for a yellow scenario. So basically, this is the REST endpoint that we are calling to, to hand the data over to Kamunda, and that is basically the data. Yeah, so I'm a car test, I'm male, I have an email address, and I want to drive golf. So I'm sending that now as an application, and then let's see what happens. So sending that, I get um, an ID, an application ID, so that seemed to work. Let's refresh the page. And um, now you can see these gray batches here. So um, this was a green scenario. So what you can already see is, we already received that email. Yeah? So obviously something has happened. Just now that email has been sent. Yeah? Um, and you can also see in cockpit which path this process instance took. So the gray batches <coughs> give you a complete transparency um, how this uh, process instance, that application went through the process. You can also dig into the, into the details. Then you also have an audit log. So every, every change that you're making is stored within the database with a timestamp and so on and so forth. You can see the data um, that came in. So my application data, for example, and other stuff. And the nice thing is you can also see the decision that has been made. So you have a direct link to the DMN table. So let's just click on that. And then you see why this application was evaluated as green. Yeah? So the, you see the input. So I wanted to drive VW Golf, I'm 39. So um, there was only one row um, was executed, and that is the last one, because all the other exceptions, they didn't trigger. And this is why this risk was ev evaluated as green. So you don't only have the full transparency about the process and how it ran, you also have the full transparency about decisions on, the, on that way that have been, have been executed. OK, um, let's just do the yellow case. Just sending it. That's the yellow case. So let me just refresh. And now you see two instances here. Yeah? And in that overview, so n imagine you don't only have two instances, but 20,000. Yeah? Now with that view, you immediately see how these 20,000 instances went through your process model. So again, complete transparency. And the blue badge here says, these are waiting instances. So one instance is currently standing and waiting here. Yeah? We can also go into that again. That's the running one. Um, so obviously, um, some case was evaluated as yellow. And now uh, we have a, a task assigned to a task worker, and he has to decide on that. Yeah? So let's just have a look onto, onto that. Therefore, we provide a so-called task list. Um, the task list is basically something like a mail inbox, not for mails, but for tasks. You can use that. So we bring that with us, but a lot of customers already have hundreds of tasks in place. And of course, you don't have to use the Kamunda one. You can also embed a Kamunda in your existing task list. So um, we have got all kinds of filters here. I'll just go on all tasks. And this is the task that was assigned. I can just click on that and claim it. So pull it to me. And this is the nice front end I just created. So this here is basically the, the front end part um, that you will be seeing that you, yet, that you can configure on your own. So here you have got the full flexibility of integrating your own UI. You also have access to the, to the, to the diagram and things like that. So a lot of features are in, in here. You can set a follow-up date. You can set a due date. Um, you can reassign things. So that's, that's um, pretty good. In my case, I just say approved. So pretty straightforward. And then I think you know what, what will happen. Kamunda will take over again and will just end that process. Yeah? And now we have got that process ended. And again, we are hopefully, re ah, here it comes, uh, we are receiving that email. That is my little POC. So uh, from modeling um, to adding this information, technical information to, um, to the model, executing that and seeing that in cockpit. Now let's go one step further to operations. Because, yeah, of course, that is a POC. That's, also, that's always nice to see um, a technical proof. But in, in real time, or in, in real life, you don't only have two instances here. Yeah? So what I have right now, and this is what I would like to simulate right now, is I wrote a little script. 
I'm running that right now, which basically starts applications every one or two seconds. Yeah, so really we are getting traffic now on our, our engine. Um, and you can see that um, when I increase that a bit and refresh, now you see um, instances are coming on and they are completely automated. Um, uh, they, are, they are finished automatically. So no human interaction anymore. Within seconds, the, the applicant has the result, yeah, which is nice. Um, one part. The other part is, uh, in real life, what happens? Error happen. Yeah? So I'm the technical operator right now. I'm looking at that. Everything is fine. So now let's imagine that service, <coughs> that email service is going down and something is happening with that and it's not available anymore. I will do that just by deactivating my internet. Um, maybe before I do that, I go on that overview. So until now, you see zero instance, uh, incidents. Everything is fine. I can go swimming in five minutes. Um, now let's drop internet. And now the, that email service is not available anymore. And now we refresh, and then we immediately see, oh, incidents are going up. Something is, is happening. We have an error. We have a problem. Um, and from here, you can directly navigate into the details of that. You can just click here, and then you see that list of process definitions, and you can directly see uh, this is the process definition that has the problem. You can also drill down here, and then you see again, ah, the problem is not um, anywhere, but it's exactly here in that, user, in, in that script task. There is the problem. And currently, we already have six incidents coming up. So what can you do? There are a lot of different features in, in Cockpit to, to do error handling. I will just highlight some of them right now. So what, what is always a good choice is to pause that task. So you can just click on that and just suspend it. Yeah? Why is that good? Just doing that right now. So when I refresh, you can see, maybe I'll refresh again. We have got 16 errors and 18 waiting instances. So two of them have not yet run into that error, which is fine. So imagine that the error is not an email service is not available, but you're sending out wrong data to someone. Yeah? So you really want to stop at that point and make sure that the data is not sent over. So you get some more time to investigate your problem. So this is what you can then do. So you can just go in the incidents tab. Normally, you would now search somewhere in the logs. Yeah? Somewhere on the console, you have to find the logs. You just click here in this case, and you see the log, directly see that log. And then you can see that error. Of course, this is an easy one. Yeah? Even a technical operator who's not um, a Java developer can understand that problem. Yeah? If the, it would be a bug, of course, he would get um, in touch with, with that developer. In my case, it's pretty straightforward. So he calls the guy. Um, make sure that um, the service is coming back and then the problem is obvious, obviously fixed. I will do that by just activating my internet again. I think it was this one here. Hope that works. Yeah. So let's refresh. Um, currently we have got 36 waiting instances here. So what I have to do is of course I have to activate that um, task here, just doing that. <coughs> And when I do that, um, you see all the waiting instances have been executed immediately. So they just start off and the emails are being sent. The other 16 with incidents, they are still remaining here. Why? Because that could be different errors. Yeah, so you really have to find the error. So what you could do in my case, because it's always the same errors, you could again go in that incident tab and retry all of them, all the 16. But now again, imagine it's not only 16, but it's 16,000. Yeah? That doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah? And that is the real-time requirement we got from a telco company. They had exactly that problem, and we didn't have a nice feature for that. And based on that, we created that, op that batch operation feature. So now you have got uh, the opportunity to execute operations on many inst um, instances at once. Yeah? So you have got a, a, a filter here that can select all instances with incidents. And then you can just say, set the retries to one. So all of them will retry automatically again. So when I do that, just execute and go in cockpit, the overview again, then all the incidents are gone. I can go swimming, yeah? Whew. Good, I'm still good in time. So let's move on to the improvement part, yeah? So what you've seen so far is um, Kamunda is writing a lot of data. So every time things change, data is written about the instances. And of course, that is a very valuable source for, for the business in terms of finding, finding errors, business errors, finding bottlenecks, things that are not working correctly. 
And with Optimize, I also have that running already on my system. We have a system or um, a component that uh, makes that data available for the business users. So I can just log in. So basically, you can imagine that as being something like a BI tool for, for processes. Yeah? Um, just as, as a start, I will show you a dashboard to give you an overview of what kind of example reports we have. So one thing that we uh, could have is we have a progress bar saying we want to be able to or want to make sure that we start 250 applications or process 250 applications per month. And then you see on a real-time basis, because that is real-time data, so you don't have to export and import stuff overnight, it's real-time data, um, you can see currently it's 172 instances, right? Um, very valuable report. Then um, Robert mentioned these heat maps, I think, already. This is the so-called frequency heat map. So um, um, the red shows, um, or generally, we, we are counting the number of instances flowing through that process. So the more red you have, the more instances have run through a, a task. Yeah? So we started um, 3,602 uh, instances, and hopefully all of them, not all of them, some were canceled in between, it can, that can happen, ran through that um, business uh, rule task, and then 89% um, went that green path, which is fine, yeah, this is intended. Um, but now you can also see that on a real-time basis. Yeah? That's very infor um, informative. And you can also see that re the rejection rate is 6.7%, um, which is also, and then it's on you again to, to determine is that good or bad, but at least you, you have the full visibility um, suddenly. And what is also interesting, you see that at nearly 25% needed to be um, processed manually. Again, good or bad, you have to decide on that, but you see the data. Um, let's just move on to another heat map, which is also very, very interesting. This is the duration heat map. So in this case, we're not counting instances or um, amounts of instances anymore, but we are displaying time and durations. So in this case, so this is, I didn't mention that, this is basically the same process of my POC, but in an advanced version. So imagine we have a, had a, a real, real life project, so, and that is the advanced version. So the application is still coming in, we have that rule task, we have got the green, yellow, and red scenario, but some more features in that BPMN. So for example, we, we can decide about the application and we can say, hopefully you can see that, you can also request further documents. So this is the next iteration of the process. Yeah? And we can see now when that is in production that requesting a document takes on average four days and seven hours. And the decide on application takes one day and 15 hours. Again, can be good or bad. The nice thing here is that you can specify target values. Yeah? You could say, um, this one, the request document, should uh, be done within five days, for example, and the decide on application should be done in, let's say, one day. And then this uh, report changes, and you only see the red when uh, target values are exceeded. So in, in the request document um, case, everything is fine. We didn't exceed our target values. But um, in that case, uh, we exceeded that by 15 hours, 15 and a half hours. Yeah? That's also very valuable to just track times and durations. Going back to the dashboard, um, what's also interesting, refreshing that, don't know what happened. Here we are again. What's also interesting is you can, of course, create pie charts and bar charts and everything. The interesting part here is you can also create reports on uh, process data. So in my case, we have the data um, in the process instances uh, of which um, cars do our applicants insure. Yeah? And you can use that data to create a report about that. That can also be valuable for you just to uh, get reports about that. Yeah? And that is a new feature, but also very, very exciting, I think. We also have um, reports for DMN tables right now. So in this case, we can really see how often has each row been executed and how many executions do we have in total. Yeah? So then it's easily to detect which rows are obviously very important, executed very often, and which ones maybe aren't. Yeah? So that you have the information to iterate on that. Let me just give you some... Um, insights in how you create a report that is pretty easy so you can just click on create report 
and then it's just the wizard. Yeah? So the first thing that you have to do is you have to select your process, the process definition and the version. And the next thing is um, you have to specify what you want to report on. So in my case, I want to count the process instances. And then you can group them by different components. In my case, I just want to group them by time over month. And then you have to specify your, your chart, so the, the kind of report you want to have. In my ca ca uh, um, case, it's a line chart. And then that's all you have to do. Now we have a, a report of, for your, the whole data set. And of course, now you can filter that. You can, for example, say, I only want to see data um, of the last 90 days, yeah, for example. Um, yeah, there are a lot of more filters in there, but just to give you an idea of how that works. Um, then I can just store that. Let's say test, save it, and then you're done. And then you can just create a new dashboard and just add these reports here. So my test, make it large and nice. Maybe another one. The heat map is always nice. Yeah, then just save it. And then you can use that as your application dashboard, for example, where you always see in real time data what is happening in your business. Yeah? One other thing, the last one, um, is alerts. Robert mentioned that. You can create alerts. So it can, or maybe you don't want to have a look on every time on your, on your optimized monitor, but you want to be informed whenever a threshold is, is being exceeded. Yeah? So then you can create an, an alert. So whenever something happens that, that where you want to receive an, a notification, you can configure that, and yet then you receive an email, and yeah, then you can directly go into optimize and, and see what is the problem. Okay, 10.30, perfect. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. It was a lot of content right now. We don't have a break yet. We have a customer talk right now. If you have further questions um, on that, um, you can get in touch with Nile or with me um, in the break. Thank you very much.